Imagine me at 25 years old. I'm clinically depressed. I'm flaccid, which means I have complete erectile dysfunction. I can't think clearly because my brain is so foggy. I have terrible anxiety. I'm not able to sleep without really, really intense antipsychotic medications to help me. And I have depersonalization disorder, which means that for me back then, I was seeing the world in a dreamlike state. Imagine that there's like a pane of glass in front of your eyes at all times. I know I'm negotiating space and time in the world, but I feel disconnected from it. It's really, really scary if you've ever been there. And I didn't know what was wrong with me and neither did the people that were helping me, my family, my doctors, my therapists. We were just trying to hold on. If you've ever been in tremendous pain, particularly psychiatric pain, because that's what I'm going to be talking about mostly, you know how slow time can move. So for me at that time, an hour, it seemed like a day, a day seemed like a week, week, like a month, you kind of get where I'm going. It was slow motion, uncomfortable living. And one fateful night, I saw an infomercial for um, men with low testosterone. And at 25 years old, despite all of my symptoms being incredibly relevant, it seemed kind of impossible that something like that could be what was going on or part of the puzzle. But I went in, got blood work, and I had extremely low testosterone. My name is Noah, and I've decided to start a mood journal um, because I have just begun testosterone replacement therapy. And for the last two weeks uh, since finding out I had low testosterone, I've been searching YouTube for other people uh, who have had the same. I suffer from major depression, anxiety, depersonalization disorder, and now low testosterone. Uh, that low testosterone part of all this could be just one of the main reasons I can't seem to get better. I thank God I found that out. I don't know that I would have survived much longer if I'm being honest. I just don't know, but I'm really, really glad that I'm still here and I'm someone who's been on TRT for 12 years. It very much helped save my life, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. But learning how to navigate life on hormone replacement therapy back when I first got on in the early 2010s was kind of confusing. There wasn't a ton of information out there that I could find uh, about what I was going through. What I wanted to do, just because so much has changed in my life, in a great many ways, but as it pertains to TRT, what I wanted to do is make a video that I wonder if it would have been helpful for me back then. A few things that I would want to know when first starting TRT, uh, just in case someone watching knows someone who could benefit from this and or of course you yourself might benefit from this if you're struggling with mental health and you don't know what's wrong or you've been diagnosed with low T and you might be starting your hormone replacement therapy journey, maybe some of my experience will help you. One of the first things I'd want myself to know is that the mega dose that my primary care physician was putting me on was going to be very ineffective long term as far as managing symptoms and side effects more specifically. So one of the things that you do when you're on TRT is you negotiate your response to your treatment, so how you're feeling relative to your blood work and your side effect profile. So essentially it's symptom relief, blood work, and side effect profile. These are three areas that we wanna make sure are in relative harmony. When I first started my TRT, my primary care doc, I don't think had ever treated anyone for low testosterone. So one of the things that he did was he put me on every other week injections at the office. Hey guys, we're doing uh, the shot of testosterone, Sipionate, it's my first, um, it's my first time taking the medication at home, so as you can see there, it says testosterone sipionate, 200 milligrams uh, per ml, it's 10 mLs, and I am doing 400 milligrams per shot, which is 2 cc. So I've got my mom, who is a nurse, and she's going to help me take the shot. If you don't feel comfortable taking it yourself, I just recommend that you have someone you care about informed on how to do it. There's a lot of tutorials online, or to have them go with you. So when you visit, and the doctor will be happy to show you. She's a... Uh, Obviously clean the space with alcohol rub, just to make sure it's sanitary or sanitized, excuse me. It's a pretty viscous uh, substance, so it's a little bit 
You know, it inks a little bit when it goes in, but... It's the price you pay for low T. You're putting a lot of muscle into that, aren't you? Yeah, next time we'll get a bigger gauge needle. Yeah, we have too small of a needle, that's why this is freaking killing my butt right now. But I'm brave and I'm on camera, so I have no choice. There you go. That's taking a testosterone shot at home. I'm sure I'll eventually learn to do it by myself, but you can have someone help you. Sometimes it's actually nice to not feel by yourself when you're doing it. Be well, guys, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? I didn't know anything other than I didn't want to be deathly ill anymore, and so I just said, yes, sure, whatever you say, that's what I'm going to do. And he put me on 400 milligrams every two weeks. To give you some perspective, 400 milligrams is probably triple the amount the typical person might expect to need, uh, weekly at least, on TRT to feel good and to improve their symptoms and to keep their blood work in a safe range. It was a whopping dose, something that you might imagine a bodybuilder would be taking weekly for professional bodybuilding purposes. So what this did for me was that it took my testosterone, which was incredibly low, my total at the time was 150-ish, and it blew my numbers through the roof. But what goes up must go down, and because of the half-life of testosterone, my numbers would then crash by the time I needed another dose. And this also led to a lot of unwanted side effects, namely acne. What's going on guys, it's Noah and just checking in with you today. Uh, today I'm gonna do a video talking about the acne issue. Look at that guys, it's so terrible. <laughs> it's not on my back too bad. Um, wanted to share that, be open with you guys. When I first started TRT, I got a pretty bad case of acne on my shoulders and on my back. Mind you, I'm someone who'd never had any acne issues growing up that I could speak of with any real relevance. So I went from being someone never having acne to suddenly having very, very oily skin. I was retaining a lot of water, became very puffy. Mind you, I was eating a lot too because my appetite came back when I started TRT. And there were some other things that went on with that dose. But the point is I was over-medicated as, as, um, as far as how much I was being given at one time. Over time, I got that down to once a week and eventually found every three days or so as my norm, which is what I do now. And that feels much, much better. So I would encourage myself to not start with every other week, just to relieve the roller coaster physically and mentally, emotionally that would come with spiking my testosterone, but then watching it crash. The whole idea is to find a homeostasis, something that you can sustain that is more akin to normal physiology and normal testosterone levels. Mind you, every three days is still not normal, but it's far more normal than every two weeks. The next thing I would relay to myself is very particular to the situation I was in, but I do think there's some truth here that could impact and positively help someone else. Testosterone replacement therapy is not going to be a cure-all for you. And this would be me talking to me. I was so desperate and so unwell and so overcome by the discomfort of being clinically depressed and struggling with anxiety and all the things that I had been learning to live with, things you shouldn't have to learn to live with, but I had no choice. I was so consumed by how poorly I felt that when I discovered the testosterone issue and I started treating it, I gave it way too much Pressure. I put too much pressure on TRT to solve all of my problems. And testosterone, while it is a very, very powerful tool, particularly if you're someone like me who was dangerously low, it didn't fix me. It just raised my floor. And it, of course, increased my ceiling as well as far as what was possible for me. To put it hopefully a little more concisely, Mental health problems outside of the ones directly correlated to hormones being low, self-esteem issues, addiction issues, lifestyle issues, those weren't eradicated just because I put my hormones in balance. 
It's been three years almost since I had my breakdown. You know, it'll be three years in April. And I wonder, is this the, the existence I have now? You know, you do a little better for a while. Um, you're more stable some days. Some days are horrible and painful. You battle symptoms. You go up and down all the time. You know, what part of what I'm doing is normal, normal human existence? Um, you know, and what part of it is a direct correlation to the fact that I had that massive breakdown and that something in my brain changed. All of the issues that I was having that I wasn't dealing with or hadn't dealt with that were causing me pain and angst, again, outside of the direct correlation to your testosterone is low, so your sleep is poor or your musculature is low or your brain fog is high. Those got better, but the issues inside my soul, inside my brain that were independent from those things, those didn't just get better and um, they still required a lot of work and a lot of effort. And I do think that I went in with this perspective that the only thing wrong with me was my low testosterone. And that wasn't true for me. What testosterone wound up doing once I found the right dosage and the right frequency and the right lifestyle to go with it, testosterone gave me the opportunity to address core issues, but it didn't uh, do anything for me in that regard. But what I'm trying to say is I still needed to learn who I was even on testosterone. I still needed to grow up and that took a long time on testosterone. I still need to deal with anxiety and depressive issues and cognitive distortions on testosterone. I still needed to deal with my relationship with alcohol and with food and with people, blah, blah, blah. I think you get what I'm saying, but I put too much pressure on testosterone being my cure-all and I used it as a really good excuse not to continue to work on myself for quite some time. I forgive myself for that, of course. I was desperate, I was young, uh, and I did the best I could. But I would want some coaching on that in retrospect. Hey, this is a piece of the puzzle. This isn't going to fix all of your problems. The next thing I would have wanted to know is that more was not going to mean better as far as my symptom relief and my side effect profile goes. I started on 200 milligrams a week, and if you know anything about hormone replacement therapy, that's a pretty high dose of TRT. Now, I'm a huge proponent of treating the individual, treating the symptom relief. How do you feel on your dosaging? Any progressive and thoughtful physician assuming our blood work is safe and we're doing well and we're not dealing with a slew of side effects like I once was, anyone worth their salt is going to focus on an individual patient and how they are feeling. They're not going to get overcome by this idea that you need to stay within a range. Men back in the 70s and 80s, they had much higher total and free testosterone levels on average than we currently do today in the 2020s. Um, we live in a much more sick society. And so our averages are predicated on the behavior of people that aren't doing well necessarily with their lifestyle, with their movement, with their exposure to toxins, with the air quality and the food and the water and the dot, dot, dot. So our ranges went from being pretty big. And then that lab range over the years has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. And so I know a lot of guys get caught up in this idea that, um, and physicians do too, and practitioners do too, that okay, your numbers are in range, you're gonna feel better. I, I don't think the range is anything to pay too close attention to, um, assuming you know why you're doing it and you have your motives in check and you're being thoughtful about your treatment. You're not just wanting more for the sake of wanting more. But to round trip back to what I was saying, more is not always better. And while I started on 200 a week, which is a really, really big dose, I eventually came down to what I'm now at, which is 160 split into two doses. And for me, I feel much, much better at 160 split into two doses than I ever did at 200 once a week. I know some guys that are down to 100 a week and they feel really, really good split into multiple doses. Some dudes do sub Q where they're going into the uh, skin and the fat in their body, not the muscle, and they're going daily to try to mimic daily rhythms of testosterone, which tend to be higher in the morning and lower at night. More is not always better. Less can equal more in the world of testosterone replacement therapy. It just depends on you and how you're feeling, how you uptake T, and how much you convert into estrogen. 
So it's a long-winded way of saying, don't be afraid to go down in your dosage. That said, don't be afraid to go a little bit higher if it's what feels good for you. It's an individual journey. Don't be too preoccupied with what other people think is best for you. Work with your physician, figure out what actually makes you feel good, and then have some accountability to make sure that you're not afraid of your dose as far as it being too low or too high for reasons that aren't based in reality. And the last thing I wish I'd known when I first started TRT is that I was going to experience an increase in hunger and energy that I was not prepared to handle as far as a weight gain perspective. Contrary to popular belief, getting on testosterone does not mean you're going to be lean and muscular. It for sure means that you're going to increase your musculature to a new baseline, and I did very quickly, which was fun. It was a fun side effect. I was not doing well low, but it also meant that I was taking in way more energy as far as food goes than I possibly could have guessed because I didn't have a good relationship with food and with fitness and with wellness and with health. I gained a lot of fat when I first started TRT and it really didn't feel good for my joints. It didn't feel good for my sleep quality. I am 5'11", 230. I've been on testosterone, 235, excuse me. Uh, I've been on testosterone for like seven months. When I started my testosterone, I was 202. So I have put on 33 pounds since starting my testosterone. The physical you know, response um, to the testosterone has been pretty, pretty crazy actually. Like, more than I would have guessed, that's for sure. But, I mean, I put on a lot of fat too. I'm not like sitting here all skinny for you either, you know, like ripped or anything like that. So diet's really key. So I would let myself know that there may be an increase, well for me, there was a marked increase in my appetite, and to be mindful that I was going to put on a lot of fat and become a bit obese if I wasn't careful, which was going to have its own slew of uncomfortable and unwanted effects, like I just mentioned, namely sleep apnea. I got really bad sleep apnea for a second when I first started TRT because I ballooned up from this frail, skinny, fat, weak, tired version of myself long removed from any vitality and energy and, and strength to this energized, hungry. I was so hungry when I first started TRT, um, but ill-equipped to handle this new hunger version of myself. So now I've got a Big Mac, a McDouble, a large fry, four times the amount of chicken in a smothered burrito, and I'm driving home. I'm like, well, Noah being Noah again, addict behavior. But the problem is this is so frequent that one, it's not helping my mood. I feel it affecting my mood. And I get two Snickers ice cream bars. And look at all this shit. I just ate, 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 and I started getting excited about working out again because I was so sick when I was depressed that I couldn't. And before I knew it, I was up to 247 pounds. So I would encourage myself to be weary of when I first started TRT and that it didn't equal health. It just meant I was going to have the opportunity to go whichever direction my lifestyle would dictate health to go. I don't know that any information or any like heads up from future me would have helped, but I think it's worth noting that it took a long time to lose that weight on TRT. It took a long, long, long time to learn how to be healthy on TRT, and perhaps that's exactly the route I needed to take. But some of it really sucked. Some of it could have been avoided just by being more mindful of what was going on um, and understanding that you can get very fat on TRT and feel very poor on TRT, depending on your lifestyle. There's this whole other topic I want to do when it comes to exercise and training on TRT, but I wanna make it its own separate video. The main reason I bring up testosterone anymore on this channel is just in case there's someone out there like I once was who isn't doing well, who's perhaps thinking about getting on psych meds before finding out what their hormone profile might be. I wanna reach out to that person and save them some trouble and give them some compassion and connect with them a little bit because I know how scary and isolating it can be to be struggling with mental health problems, um, particularly if you don't know that there could be a hormone component 
that if addressed can make a huge difference and could help you avoid a lot of suffering and a lot of trial and error on psych meds that you perhaps don't need to be on. I've been consistent and, and content with my TRT forever. I'm so grateful for it, but it's like a non-factor in my life. I've been doing it for so long. Every Monday and Thursday, effectively, I just do the exact same thing. Um, and nothing has changed and there's not much to note. Um, so it's more like reflecting on the past and then and just connecting when I can and reminding people of my story just in case it could help new people and, and to focus on them. Otherwise, just check in with me. Tell me how you're doing. I'd love to know as well. I appreciate you guys so much for being here and supporting this channel. We've had some new faces popping in and that's great. Um, I'll try to keep my ear to you guys as to what content you might want and I hope you're doing well. If you are, that's amazing. I'm doing really well these days and it makes me so happy. Uh, and if you're not, I hope you get support. I have needed support and will continue to need support. And that's a, it's nothing to be ashamed of. So take good care of yourself. I'll see you in the next video and good luck on your TRT journey. If any of you want to chat with me specifically one-on-one, -on -one, you can click the link below. I have a set more account, which is just a platform where people can pay to have time with me specifically in a video uh, format, well, a video conferencing format. It helps support me, gives me a chance to be of service and use my experiences uh, to help you. And it's something I really enjoy doing. I usually chat with one or two of you every week from all over the globe. It's incredibly rewarding for me. And I do my best to be of maximum service to you as well, of course. Okay, thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next one.